uterine adenocarcinoma. And so what that is, is cancer of the uterus. This is a very common problem in the female rabbit. And so there's several different studies out there. Um, and so the incidence varies kind of depending upon the study that you're looking at. But the incidence of this particular type of cancer ranges from about 60 to 80 percent. So what that means is 60 to 80 percent of female rabbits that are over two years of age will go on to have this cancer develop if they are not spayed before they're two years of age. Um, what we do know is that certain breeds are a little bit more predisposed. The Dutch rabbit, being one of them, is a little bit more predisposed. This is a problem. Okay, so what are the signs that this is an issue? You may have absolutely no signs at all. And a lot of times, initially, when cancer is occurring, cancer starts off as a single cell problem. So one cell that's just acting out, um, not doing what it's supposed to be doing, of course you're not going to see any signs of it as a single cell problem, but then it multiplies and becomes um, encompassing much more of that uterus and really becomes a problem. You do start to see things like bloody urine. You may have them just being lethargic, just laying around, not really wanting to do as much as they used to. They may be urinating more. They may have an, a mass in their abdomen, like if you were to feel their belly, you might feel something firm. Um, I have had rabbits, too, that just came in and they just looked a little unkempt with their fur, like they were just a little, you know, not really cleaning themselves, not really grooming themselves, and that was their only sign. To diagnose it, sometimes we can diagnose it based on physical exam. If a rabbit comes into the hospital, it has a history of urinating blood, it's a female that's older than two years of age, and I feel its abdomen and I can feel a mass in the back portion of the abdomen, I'm going to be you know, pretty sure that we're dealing with a uterine cancer. Now, certainly I can't say that with 100% certainty until we actually take the cancer out, look at it under the microscope, and then underneath the microscope is where a pathologist actually identifies that, yep, this is cancer. Um, of course, there's other steps that we can do beforehand to help us determine if we have cancer. Radiographs are one thing. We may take an x-ray and actually see a nice big mass that's located in a particular spot. That would make me say, okay, that's most likely the uterus. That's most likely cancer in the uterus. Ultrasound can be helpful, but it isn't always. Um, it's something that you have to have it at the right sort of stage in the growth of that cancer. Because I can tell you that I have had rabbits before that... Um, were ultrasounded, nothing was seen, and we took them to surgery, and there was cancer in that uterus. So it's not a perfect diagnostic, but sometimes it's helpful. And of course, surgical exploration, that's actually, you know, going in there, getting that cancer out of there, identifying a mass in the uterus. And I put biopsy up there because of biopsy, you would never go in there, look at a uterus, see that there's a mass, and just take a biopsy of it. You'd take the whole thing out, but then you send that whole thing out for biopsy to say, okay, is this truly cancer? What kind of cancer is it? And it helps us to, you know, understand the prevalence of this disease. So the treatment of uterine adenocarcinoma is to spay them. And really, we want to be looking at prevention as opposed to treatment. We do a whole lot better job when we're preventing disease than when we're treating disease. And so this is a disease we know that we can prevent. And preventing it is spaying them when they're young rabbits. Um, now, for those cases that weren't spayed when they're young and they do develop uterine cancer, we do have to, um, we go to surgery, we take it out, everything's fine, we do have to do follow-up with these rabbits because, again, cancer starts off as a microscopic disease and cancers like to spread. Where this particular cancer likes to spread is it likes to spread to the chest. And so before we even, if we're suspicious of uterine cancer, before we even go into surgery, we're taking x-rays because we want to see is there any chance of spread in the chest. Because if there is chance of spread in the chest, then it may not be right for that particular animal to go through a surgery. Because when you have cancer in the chest and it's metastasized, that unfortunately is at a point where we're not able to save that animal. So we're then focusing a lot more on quality of life rather than quantity of life. But if we went to the sur we took x-rays before surgery, there was no evidence of metastasis. We went to surgery, we took the mass out, it came back that it was uterine cancer. Okay, what do we need to do for follow-up? Well, we need to be x-raying this particular individual a few times down the road to really be seeing, do we have any evidence 
of something growing in the chest that could have been there microscopically because it X-ray isn't going to be able to see microscopic metastases. That's something that can develop later on because something already could have spread, but it may not show up on an x-ray that first time. So we do have to really be doing x-rays with these guys every three to six months for about a year to two years um, before we can really say, okay, this animal's clear and unlikely that there was any uh, spread. This particular cancer is a very slow spreading cancer, so that's why we have to follow it for quite a while before we can really successfully say, yep, you're clear, we don't have to work.